It's been a while since I e-begged, but unexpectedly having to rebuild both modules was quite expensive. So if you believe in the shining dream of underwater hamster objectivism, want to see more habitats, bigger habitats, faster, then consider dropping some money on my Patreon. That's all. Thank you. Hello, my tender beauties. If you'll recall, last time I completed a replacement module, and at the end of the video, I put it in the aquarium to test it for 72 hours. It didn't make it 24. I began to admit water through the gate valve because it was missing the inner gasket due to a uh, incorrect diameter of the hole through the shell itself. So much of this video will be spent rebuilding that module. That's right, I've had to rebuild both modules. But, uh, whatever it takes, right? A lot of work has gotten done on the habitats recently, but it occurred to me I haven't filmed almost any of it, and that many of you would probably be rightly pissed off at that, so I'm going to try to capture more footage of the new habitat module. As you can see, I've already affixed the ballast pods and the gate valve. I had to build this completely from, almost from scratch. This, this is not a salvaged part. This is not a salvaged part. This is salvaged. The ballast pods are salvaged. Everything else is brand new because um, if you saw on Twitter, the gate valve I used before, number one, the seals got really fucking damaged and fucked up from sharp little bits of silica granule getting into the mechanism when I opened and closed the gate valve and it was no longer watertight, which should give you some clue as to why NASA is so interested in the suit port as a way of keeping sharp little bits of lunar regolith out of the seals of their airlocks. Anyway, the other issue was the old habitat also had slightly too large a diameter of hole here. I cut it two inches assuming I was going to be using a two inch diameter gate valve like the other, like the original habitat, but um, this being a 1.5 inch gate valve, it needed a 1.75 inch hole. And because it was just slightly too large, the internal seal didn't have anything to keep it in. It would just pop out and I couldn't use it. The, the gasket here, I don't know if it, if it picks up. That gasket is absolutely fucking necessary, not to form a seal against the habitat shell, because I can just use silica for that, silicone for that, which I have in addition to the gasket. The gasket pushes in this way, also on the sliding door. There are two gaskets that pinch it from either direction, so when it slides between them, it forms a watertight seal. Without both of those, it's not watertight. That was one of the issues with the new module. Um, that necessitated b rebuilding it almost completely from scratch. I'm learning many expensive lessons, but these are pretty fucking necessary because if I'm going to put a big habitat and a bunch of them in a, in a lake or pond, that's a really challenging environment where I can't get out there to fix problems in a hurry. So these things have to be nailed down to a science. I have to perfect everything about them so that they're as reliable as they possibly can be. And I feel good about this one. The other one has been in the water for like a week now. So it's well past the evaluation period, but I was already totally confident in it. I even shut off the pump at various points and inter intentionally created a pressure differential um, by reducing the air pressure inside to see if it would leak. And it doesn't leak. I can trust it even with pressure differentials, which is something that's gonna be necessary for the crew capsule of ham sub later on. So I'm learning a lot of lessons from this whole debacle that are applicable to future elements of the project. I'm quite pleased with that. These were necessary lessons I didn't really know were necessary. It's just the unknown unknowns involved in any project. But anyway, let's get to drilling the hole for the power cord. The rest of the umbilical is already built. I just need to drill a hole to get the power cord through and another hole, two more holes after that. One for the airline to carry air down and that, that's just a hole large enough to fit, fit one of these into with with uh, silicone sealant and then t one or two more holes depending on how I want to mount it for the uh, flood sensor for the for the alarm incidentally one of the things I've been working on since the leak is decoration you may have seen pictures of that on Twitter um, including some 3d printed Vending machines patterned after the ones from Bioshock, El Amo Bandito here, of course, and then you have Gatherer's Garden. And these are functional gravity-fed food dispensers as well. And, and I've 
changed the layout of this module compared to the old one so I can fit two of these in here. That's quite a lot of food. Now here's the layout currently. <clears throat> As is the standard for this new generation of habitation modules, there is a re removable, hand washable chloroplast floor with little, let me show you, hold on, here's the litter box by the way, they are going to be litter trained. With all the little indentations to securely mount the vending machines built into it. I just go like that, push it down. It doesn't quite perfectly fit because of those bolts, but it it's 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 snug, but it fits. I just go like that. So I can remove every element, none of it's permanent, and which is especially important for cleaning and resupply. And then when this comes down here, in this corner you've got the, the water tube. Hold on. Takes some work to align it. This has been attached such that when you fully screw the water bottle in, it faces this way, which is backwards from how it used to be. There's a reason for that. If you look at this mounting system here, I may have it upside down, in fact I do. This allows me to removably attach the external signage, such that there can be outside neon signs like in Rapture. And I, I cannot LED illuminate those safely, I want to. I don't think I can. What I can do is add a little LED ultraviolet spotlight to uh, see if I have one on hand. I don't think I do. Uh, at least it's not nearby. Here it is. To have a sort of iridescent effect. It's hard to see on camera. But basically it makes these neon colors pop. And I'm thinking a, a single UV LED behind the cameras pointed at the habitats will cause these signs to appear to glow and uh, give me the effect that I want without requiring me to make watertight underwater electric signs. So that's where I am with the decor. I've also done a great deal of work on internal decor. Some of these pictures are a bit outdated. I'm going to throw those up on the screen now. This is the old layout, but this is, is a, a pretty good representation of the graphics I've taken from the Bioshock Wikia, printed out at the correct scale and then laminated, uh, as well as soaking them internally at the edges of the paper with hot sauce so it's a hamster's chew, they'll, they'll stop pretty quickly. Uh, that's a, a pretty reliable way to prevent chewing. They also don't seem to like PLA, which is the plastic I printed this from. It's too rigid. They like to chew soft plastics. I already have a much larger version of this vending machine uh, in their land cage. And they don't seem to be interested in chewing that. It's, it's too hard. There's a specific consistency of plastic, a, a threshold of softness beyond which they'll start to chew it, and PLA seems to be safe. Here it is all hooked up. Three holes, one for the sensor wires, which when water bridges the connection, makes a truly ear-splitting sound from this little alarm box, which is outside of the aquarium. I've had to explain that to people. They're like, won't the alarm hurt the hamster's ears? And I'm like, why would I put it inside the habitat when I won't be able to hear it since it'll be muffled by the water? The whole point is that I can hear it, not the hamsters. It's going. It's at the end of the umbilical. It goes up out of the water. Uh, the second hole, of course, is for the air, and the third hole, hole is for the power. And there's still room on the left side for one more hole if I ever want to put a USB webcam inside of these habitation modules. So there's still, there's still room for improvement if money supports that decision and if it's something that enough people demand. Although, really, my bandwidth is struggling right now because I've got three webcams broadcasting all the time. I'm about to have three more from Hambunker. That's going to be six webcams on this connection broadcasting in 1080p. Each one of them is 720p by itself constantly, so I don't really know if there's enough bandwidth to put an additional two cameras on this connection. I guess we'll see. Okay, now everything is hooked up and sealed from 
one side, especially the areas that penetrate the hole with silicone, which is going to take two days to cure. And on the inside, I, I used cyanoacrylate, not as a sealant this time, crucially, just as a anchoring agent in order to create a solid mass on the other side so it doesn't pull out. So you can't just yank it out if you pull hard enough. I've had bad results with cyanoacrylate one time just because I used it as a sealant instead of a anchoring substance. And, and I don't think that's going to be an issue going forward. Now I just have to hook up the power cable to this replacement plug since it was necessary to snip off the original plug in order to get the wire through that little hole. Damn it. There it is finished. With a little bit of silicone to seal the edges just because I sometimes drop it in the water in the process of threading it through the, the hole where all the umbilicals come out. That's everything. All I need to do now is wait for the silicone to cure, which should take about two days, and then once it's in the water, after that it'll take three days for evaluation to complete. And if there are no leaks, no water ingress rather, then it's cleared for hamsters. Both halves are now back in the water. Looking rad as fuck, I might say. They kind of lean to the left because the outer walls of the habitat shells are sloped inward. I think I can solve that by using a heat gun on the tunnel so that it sags in the middle, which will actually help it drain better too. I'll do that uh, at some point in the future, but just for right now, oh, what a lot of work this was. Those are two completely brand new modules that I had to build just because I was taking no risks and, I mean, a leak is basically the ultimate failure state for this project, even if nothing catastrophic happens. Um, I'd like to say I'm lucky, but positive pressure habitats really just are inherently kind of idiot-proof. Even if they leak a little bit, the, the trapped air at higher than outside pressure safeguards against any really bad outcomes. So, I, I think that was just me being sloppier than I thought, and now going forward I'm going to be a little bit insane about this, because the project necessitates it. They're looking beautiful, brand new, completely sealed using the new technique, uh, both with inner and outer gaskets for the gate valves, which match now, unlike the old complex, because I had put a two-inch gate valve on one of them before, not knowing what I was going to be using in the future. Uh, bubble plumes are, are mostly uniform to the left and right. The signs look really cool. The vending machines look really cool. All that shit in there. That's going to be really cool to see the hamster interact with that. Oh yeah, the UV light. Okay, check this out. Right? That might actually work. It can't be a flashlight, obviously. It's battery operated. I'll have to find some kind of LED UV lighting element that can run off of grid power. But it has more or less the effect that I thought it would, of making the signs glow. I think that's definitely something I'm going to have to per pursue at some point in the future, after I uh, fix the issue with the tunnels. But for now, I'm just pleased. This was a long road getting here. Wow. Some of you might say it was an overreaction. Um, I would say, look at the hamsters. That's the cutest fucking animal in the world. If anything happens to that because of me, that's not only the end of the project. So... Going a little crazy and overboard in the event of even a small malfunction. This is basically hamster NASA. So that should make sense of it. There's a little bit of water there, you'll see. That's from the water bottle. It's directly below the water bottle. The water bottle has always dripped. Usually the hamsters um, drink that up, though. There's nothing coming in through the gate valve because it's properly sealed with dual gaskets now on either side. Look, look at that little baffle keeping the fluff out of the gate valve mechanism. I'm pretty proud of that. I hope that will work when subjected to actual hamsters. But for now, everything looks to be working more or less exactly as I hoped that it would. It's been about an hour. So far, so good. Of course, it'll be three days before I can put a hamster in there. I wanted to have that done 
in time for this video, but there's no rushing mad science. Look at how cool that looks. Those fucking vending machines. I'm so glad that this project finally has a 3D printer. You can't really make it out, but behind the litter box is that mural from uh, that, that the opening room in Bioshock, the first room you enter where it's like, my daddy's smarter than Einstein, stronger than Hercules, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there just wasn't enough room to show it off. You can see the No Gods or Kings Only Hamster banner quite well, though. I'm pleased. This is what you'll see when you go to the, the Twitch, twitch.tv slash hamster. The link is in the description, as well as the link to basically everything else associated with this project, so check it out. Now that the aquarium habitat complex has been completely rebuilt using a new sealing technique, provided it's as reliable as I expect it will be, I can dedicate all of my time, energy, and resources towards completing Ham Bunker. That's probably going to require some powered tools, either a rented ditch witch or a power auger. Uh, either one's going to be fairly costly, so that might have to wait a little while. Uh, some other things to look forward to in the near term. I'm going to add a webcam to the 3D printer. I actually 3D printed a little mounting arm so that you can watch my prints fail in real time. Until then, remember, be the you that tiny dancing snoop knows you can be. Da -da 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 -da.